My name is Neil Wabe. Uh, I'm from Riken in Japan. Um, our paper is called Distinguishing Quantum and Classical Transport Through Nanostructures. So the motivation of our work is um, some, com some kind of generic nanostructure with transport, such as a single electron transistor or a superconducting single electron transistor. Uh, quantum dots, maybe a series of coupled quantum dots. Some generic system where you can attach leads and uh, apply a current. Um, so what we wanted to do was formulate a simple test to determine whether the internal dynamics of this system, as a particle hops on, undergoes some evolution, and then hops out at some later time, whether these dynamics are dominated by some quantum dynamics, some quantum coupling, coherent tunneling rates between different sites, or whether they're purely classical or a mixture of both. And what we did is we took it as inspiration, or as a foundation, the legged garg inequality. The legged garg inequality is very similar to the Bell inequality, but in, this, in a way more simple, they, did, they uh, described a situation where they did measurements on a single spin uh, in time, and then they formulated some correlation functions. And then on a combination of these correlation functions, you could define an inequality which would distinguish macroscopic real realism, or macroscopic realistic theories, from other theories, for example, quantum mechanics. So they said that the classical world is macroscopic real, and the quantum world isn't. Um, there's some technicalities involved in their definition of what the classical world is, which some people don't agree with, but as a foundation, it's, it's a good start. And so what we did is we defined two types of inequalities for two, ty two different types of measurements. The first one, very similar to the Legge-Garg case, is we assumed that we could measure the, char the position of a charge inside the nanostructure. So, for example, I'll show a nicer figure later. Uh, if you have some series of connected quantum dots. Maybe another one up here, and down here. Some network of complicated network. And then you have tunneling into the reservoirs from one of the sides and tunneling in from the other side. If you can measure the position of a charge with a quantum point contact or some charge detector, then we define an inequality which um, tells you whether the me measurements in time, uh, this kind of measurement, is determined by quantum dynamics or by um, a classical rate equation. Um, and the result for that one is just a sim simple formulation. Which looks like this. one from here. So these Q operators are just defining the, uh, um, the measurement of the QCC. And you just need two measurements in time if you're in a stationary situation. Um, and the inequality is simply defined in terms of uh, the expectation value of that operator Q, which is not time dependent because we assume some stationary condition. Um, if, this, if you do these measurements and your measurements violate this inequality, then you know that they're not defined by some classical rate equation, but by some possibly quantum rate equation. The second, the second uh, inequality we defined was in terms of the current lead, leading the device. So you imagine a particle hops on and undergoes some dynamics. At some point, it stochastically hops out again. And this, if you imagine this as a single quantum object, this is like a very invasive measurement, so it's harder to do, write down an inequality. But we've proved it for um, <coughs> some restricted basis, so if you only have two or three sites which the particle can hop on and off inside this box, then you can also um, prove a bound to the inequality on correlations in time. And uh, in the paper we showed that bound and also showed that the quantum case violates it. And so hopefully these kind of inequalities could be useful for some experiment where they want to prove that their nanostructure is, you know, really quantum, maybe some observing some oscillations in time, perhaps aren't enough because you know a classical system can also have uh, you know, oscillatory solutions. So these inequalities might be useful for some uh, practical experiment. Thank you.